It's finally time! We've got an updated reveal of our pond plants and the front yard, this time on Make and Believe. It's been several months since our reveal of the final pond and I still hadn't finished all my plantings and of course they hadn't had time to grow in but it's summer now in Los Angeles so all of the flowers are now at what I would say the height of their bloom and some of them are already done blooming so we thought we should make this video before things start dying back down and turning into fall time so uh, the most exciting thing, in my opinion, are the water plants that I've added to the pond. We've got a water lily that is in bloom today, which is very exciting. The lilies open and close uh, with the sun, and they only bloom for a couple of days. And some plants, when they're first put into a pond, only last or give off one or two blooms in a year. So I've already transplanted this into a bigger pot which was an adventure story for another day and put some fertilizer taps in and this is our third or fourth bloom so it seems to be happy and doing well and then i also have a papyrus plant which is a water plant uh, so it's in a pot in the water and i'm really excited about this it does really well in full sun and um, so those are my two water plants and then all of the rest of the flowers, these actually got a lot bigger than I expected them to get and are doing a lot better than I expected them to get. I have salvia, calendula, fire witch, nemesis, lavender, snapdragons, and the snapdragons are huge. Uh, but like I said, this is the beginning or the end. Well, technically it's the beginning of summer, but since LA has such a hot climate, everything blooms early and stops blooming early. So I'm expecting these plants to die back down and this is about as big as they'll get. So let me give you a little tour of what we have going on in the front yard, aside from the pond, just to show. Uh, we've got our lilies in bloom and the roses aren't blooming right now, but they have been giving us beautiful blooms and they continue to bloom. And I've got some echinacea down here. And it's turned into quite a shady wonderland. We've got lots of places to sit. And of course, I'm always working on it, but um, we'll just give you a little visual tour of all of the plants so that you can see everything that we've done.
of course there are tons and tons of plants here and it would take all day for me to name them all but maybe you were able to uh, recognize a few. Um, another really exciting thing about the pond is the wildlife that we've been getting. In addition to the birds, which you might hear chirping very loudly, who have definitely made our front yard the home, they like to come and take baths and eat seeds and drink water. It's really wonderful and we love it. Uh, we also have a new inhabitant of the pond, a little Japanese snails, water snails. At least that's what I think they are. They magically appeared one day. I'm not sure where they came from, but they're great because they're eating the algae and they are helping the ecosystem of the pond to stay clear and they're super cute. I have a close-up video that I'll show you. Well, I have a new inhabitant of the pond. He's a little baby snail. I'm not sure. I think this might be a Japanese water snail. It magically appeared. I did not bring it. It is definitely a water snail because it swims. What's oh, hiding from me? Come on back out. Well, welcome to the pond, little snail. So of course, in addition to all of the plants and, and fun stuff we have going on over here, we have our home garden of food over on this side. And I just thought I'd show you what we've got going on now um, that it's summer. So this is asparagus, but it has gone to fern. So we're not getting any more asparagus this year, but it is a perennial. So every year, year the asparagus comes out in the spring. We've got some strawberries and some lemon thyme big old tomato here and on the other side I'm starting to grow some corn which is exciting in addition to arugula that I grow every year and it reseeds itself uh, but you can see there's a couple little corn guys coming up over here and we'll try to give you an update when those get big and then in box number two my sunflower is pretty much on the way out. It's got a bunch of seeds that the birds will enjoy eating. And I've got another tomato and we've got our zucchinis. We decided to do zucchini again this year, which is super great. In fact, it looks like I have a zucchini here now. Check that out. Wow. Not bad, not bad. Hello. <laughs> uh, and in addition to the zucchini and the tomato, we've got some basil coming up some arugula under there and over here we've got our kale which you've probably seen before if you've been following us because this is the original kale that we planted several years ago there were six plants they all turned into trees and this is the last kale tree left but it's still giving us kale whenever we need it and want it and the last thing I have some magic beans that I've planted over here that they are just starting to sprout. I was a little late with planting them, so we'll see how they do, but I'm excited about them. So that is the edible side of our garden. Here we are in the shadiest part of the yard which is so nice. We've installed this lion fountain, which gives us another audio uh, sound of water in addition to the waterfall of the pond. And then all of my shade plants are here. And, and this area is still, I'm still working on it, but it is where a lot of the plants that I've adopted that need help or are going to be relocated to the backyard are currently living and getting the nicest, shadiest, coolest, wettest environment of our yard. So uh, it's also a nice place to hang out and we really like it, especially now that we have enclosed it with the fence and it's quite peaceful. So thanks so much for joining us on this tour of the front yard and we'll see you next time on Making Believe.